We're glad everyone could show up. Uh, we got uh, some information to pass out uh, and uh, answer some questions. And then we're going to talk about the, uh, the sewer spill that happened. And we're also going to, once we finish talking about that, we're going to talk about all the projects that the city has been working on and what we've accomplished so far and where we are in the EPD process with the consent order. And uh, then we'll talk about, uh, we'll have some questions. Probably get some questions to answer for the folks that still have questions after the presentation. So we don't have any PowerPoint tonight. We're just going to talk. Uh, it's going to be pretty informal. And uh, if at some point during the meeting that there's a pressing question, then uh, please raise your hand and we'll get to you. Uh, if I look, my voice is a little off tonight, I've, I've been under the weather, but we're going to get through it. So, um, first of all, uh, as all you know, we had a uh, 7.5 million gallon sewer. <coughs> Uh, out of uh, one of our lift stations. The lift station's name is Greenberg. And uh, the result of that uh, non-functioning station was that was released into the creek, which ultimately flows to Whistler Creek. The, the uh, station failed to operate because there was a terminal disconnection. And during the course of some uh, equipment repair, one of the technicians that was working on the system uh, neglected to put that wire, that cable back on the controller. And that controller really uh, monitored the amount of waste that's coming into the wet well of the station. So as far as the station knew, there was nothing in the wet well. No reason to send an alarm out because it was sensing that there wasn't, that the system was not in high level. It also sent a control signal to the PLC, which tells the pumps to start and to run and to alternate, and to, uh, of course, pump that flow out to the Whistler Coochie Wastewater Treatment Facility. In a nutshell, uh, you know, that's, uh, that's what happened at the station. And uh, one might ask, okay, what about secondary controls? Why didn't you have a secondary control there? Well, we did have a secondary control. Uh, the secondary control of that station, ball floats, which activate a uh, beacon light on the station, which uh, you know we had hoped that someone would see a beacon light flashing and they would uh, call our number and let us know that, uh, that we had an issue with the station. So that didn't carry uh, our uh, treatment plant <coughs> operators at the Wister Fuji treatment plant called in noticing that flow was decreasing coming into the plant. So as a result of that, our guys went out, tried to find out where the flow was going and why the flow was low, discovered that that station had been disabled and it was unable of communicating that call into us into the city. And our guys responded within a couple of hours, found what the problem was, got it repaired, and uh, the system started to function properly. Now those numbers that we reported to EPD, of course they're, they are they are calculated number, estimated numbers. That uh, and we base that number on the what the treatment plant is coming into the state, into the treatment plant. We took that number from the prior week, and then we estimated and we calculated what we actually received at the plant and the difference between what we normally receive and what we actually receive. Is the number that we reported to EPD as a sewer spill. What did we do after the uh, sewer spill was identified? I know there's been some conversation about what we did. We did <coughs> more, could get more, could get less. What we actually did was uh, the moment that we got the system back up and operational, we started to identify where this, uh, where it flows to. So we went to that particular point where, uh, where, where we have the inflows at, where it's accessible, and we start to remediate. And remediation for us is actually uh, making sure that areas are safe, where we have human, uh, humans getting around it, so we put down HGH to make sure that there's no bacteria in those areas. We send our back trucks out to the bridges that the creek runs under and started to collect uh, flow coming in, coming down that creek in our back trucks and 
and we also uh, uh, put out our signs at that point. Uh, DPD required to put them up to 20 miles. So up to 20 miles along the creek where it is easily accessible, the requirement says we put signs out letting folks know that uh, we have to. All right. After the sewers 